It is Friday, October 16th. Let's talk PlayStation. We are officially one month away from PS5 launching, and that seems very surreal to say, but yesterday we finally had the UI revealed to us, and that was the last major piece of the PS5 puzzle that we were waiting for, and it was great to finally see. So we did a separate video already recapping all the features, impressions, things like that, and outside of that news from yesterday, it was still a very busy week. We have a lot of news stories to go over, so let's get into it. As always, first up, our PlayStation Plus reminder. The October games are available right now. That's Need for Speed Payback and Vampire. You have a little over two weeks left to download these or add them to your library. Now, for our first news story, I want to talk about PS4 firmware 8.0 because clearly this did not go over very well. This firmware is finally out of beta, was recently released. And to quickly recap some of the headlining features here of what we're seeing, you have updates to party and messages. These features are now linked together. So you'll now use groups for messaging and voice chat where previously these were two different groups, two different functions, now it's unified. There's also new avatars. So Sony added a bunch of new free, completely free avatars. They don't do this too often, but you've got new ones for Bloodborne, Journey, Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us Part 2, Ratchet and Clank, Toro, Ino Ue, even Jack and Daxter. I've been rocking the uh, the same Dark Jack avatar for eight years on PSN, and uh, I think it was finally time to switch it up to a new Dark Jack avatar, so that's, that's what I did. That's what I got out of that. Uh, you can also mute all mics from the quick menu. That's very handy. There's now simplified and more flexible parental controls. There's now two-step verification for third-party authenticator apps. That's also very handy. Uh, the removal of new events and communities. So the existing ones are fine, but these are clearly being phased out, unfortunately. Uh, then we've got the remote play app. These have been updated for mobile and PC to reflect the option for PlayStation 5. So this isn't something directly shown in firmware 8.0, but on the separate applications, you might have already had to update your clients, and these are now set and ready for PS5 functionality. And even specifically for PS5, uh, while it's still capped at 1080p, you now have a manual toggle for HDR support if your display is so equipped. Now, that's all the headlining features, and so far initially 8.0 had a lot of issues with the friends list loading, but the big problem everyone is having is the new party system. This is a situation where if it isn't broke, don't fix it, but that's what Sony has stepped in to attempt to do, and that's the problem here, is that it's broken up the general flow of how people have been using parties on PS4 for years, because it worked just fine. And so, in theory, you think, oh, that makes sense. You've got two separate features, unify them into one, make it easier to use, but really, you've uh, taken away the accessibility of parties, because the way it was before, you could set up an open party, people could come and go as they please, you could send out invites without having to create these arbitrary separate group messages that are really just singleized to one particular person. And depending on how you use parties, whether you have one group of friends, maybe it doesn't matter to you, but if you have multiple pools of friends and there's crossover there, that's where it gets even more annoying. And so it's really problematic with what they've done here, but this is something where it's going to be going into PlayStation 5. So it's this isn't going to be easily reverted. You may have to tolerate this for a bit and see how it pans out over time and how Sony will take the uh, a lot of the initial criticism of what they've done with this new firmware update. Now, the other major issue that sprang up here is a notification that your voice is being recorded while in a party. And social media really ran with this and it became misconstrued that Sony's listening in on users. But the company clarified that this is about other users potentially recording you and reporting your bad behavior. So voice chat recording for moderation purposes is part of a, is part of PlayStation 5. It's actually a feature of the system. And so the warning there, even though it's on PS4, is for the situation where you may be chatting with a PS5 user and they could potentially record you and report bad behavior. They're pretty much covering themselves saying that there's no expectation of privacy when you're entering into a party chat and you've agreed to this in the PSN terms of service. I believe it's been in there since PlayStation 4 actually launched. Um, but either way, Sony themselves are not the ones listening in on you or recording your voice. This is really more of a warning for the possibility that somebody else is doing this to you. For our next news story, this is unfortunately a little bit on the older side of things because this story broke out right after I uploaded last week's video, and I hate when that happens, but anyway, over on the official PlayStation blog and the official PlayStation support page, we got uh, a Q&A about PS5 backwards compatibility support with PS4 software and features, and now we have more specific answers that we have about the compatibility feature in general. And so one thing is the compatibility rate. We've been hearing over and over again, the vast majority of the games work over 4,000 plus times titles, less than 1% won't work on PS5. Well, now we know just how many games won't work, and that's 10. 10 PlayStation 4 games out of 4,000 plus titles 
will not work on PS5, and those games are DWVR, Afro Samurai 2, Revenge of Kuma Volume 1, TT Isle of Man, Ride on the Edge 2, Just Deal With It, Shadow Complex Remastered, Robinson the Journey, We Sing, Hitman Go Definitive Edition, Shadwin, and Joe's Diner. That last one there seems to be a fan favorite for some strange reason. But uh, so why do 10 measly games out of the entire library not work? Well, this is exactly what we discussed previously when we heard Sony's statements about this before. There might be some fringe cases where games, for whatever reason, just don't work. And that's exactly what we're hearing. So the developer of DWVR actually responded over on Reddit where he says, and I quote here, can't really go into too much detail. The game just doesn't launch on PS5 for some odd reason. Quite weird given I'm using Unreal Engine like so many other games that do work fine. We're also hearing from the developer of Shadwin where they say, we have a lot of PS4 games that are playable on PS5, including all of the trying games and nine parchments. However, for some reason, Shadwin freezes on the loading screen. If this happened on one of our newer games, we'd probably figure out the reason quickly. Unfortunately, Shadwin is quite old, using an older version of our engine, and we don't have it up and running anymore. So that game will not get patched, whereas DWVR, they actually are working to get that fixed. Also, TT Isle of Man 2, that will be fixed as well. So really, once the patches for these games are out, we're looking at eight titles, but that is just Quite impressive to see actually that out of 4,000 games, which Sony was evaluating themselves, they probably had a team of QA testers working through this library day in and day out, testing all these random games that they've probably never heard of or, or played before, and the results are 10 games, that's actually quite impressive. And so this really just highlights the overall complexities of game development in general. It doesn't matter how rich and reliable compatibility appears to be from PS4 to PS5 or the actual process of making a game, porting a game, whatever, from top to bottom, it's normally a nightmare. So to have 10 games not work out of 4,000 plus titles is actually pretty impressive. However, we do have a slight caveat here in that it probably is more than 10 games just based off the fact that from the FAQ we also learned that PS5 will not support the PS4 second screen mobile app and this is an application that's required to play PlayLink titles. If you remember this initiative that Sony did, these are more party oriented focused games where you have a bunch of people in a room, it's local play, they all download the app on their phone and they play from their phone so you don't use a controller. And so I think why they're not on this list is because while they are still regular PS4 games that can play just fine and they had to initially be started and navigated through with a DualShock 4. So I think in theory that's why they're not actually part of the list because they do inherently function just fine. Just that when you get to the portion where you need a smartphone, that's where the game would stop working. And depending on the title, I think you can still use DualShock 4s, but some of them I think, depending on the mode or the whole aspect of that game, you need the smartphone app. And so technically the game plays, but you, you can't play it if that makes sense. Now, this wasn't a part of Sony's FAQ, but I still found it pretty noteworthy, which is Rock Band 4. This game was not on the list of 10 games that won't work, so we know it's playable on PS5. It's just that Harmonix recently confirmed the game is completely playable on PS5. So, all your instruments uh, should work no problem. DLC carries forward, and that's great considering that this game has a very active community of players that play on a daily basis and download DLC on a daily basis, and all that stuff will carry forward no problem. Also, Rock Band 4 recognizes the DualSense microphone, so in theory, you could use your DualSense to sing. You could sing right into the controller, and that will register. Now, it probably, probably won't sound that well. <laughs> I don't think it will be the most ideal way to play the game, but it is nice to see that for such a unique title like Rock Band, not only does it work on PS5, but it's also benefiting from being played on PlayStation 5 as well. Now, this is a good segue to our next news story, which is Game Boost on PS5. So back to the Sony FAQ. Sony did talk a little bit about this, not too much. In fact, it wasn't all that revealing. It's pretty much what we expected. This is why when Microsoft sent out the prototype Series X units and their stipulation and their embargo was you could only test uh, backwards compatibility, I said, well, that's a great place to look at because a lot of what we see there is what we're gonna expect on PlayStation 5. And sure enough, the way that Sony describes it, we can see higher frame rates, higher resolutions, uh, decreased load times, but these are all dependent on the particular game that you're playing. So the way that Sony describes it, I think are scaring people a little bit because they describe it as select PS4 titles, implying that potentially games are whitelisted to accept game boost or to reject it. But I think this is more in lines with what we see on PS4 Pro where you can just turn on boost mode and it will apply to all titles and it will be discretionary in terms of if you see benefits or perhaps games maybe don't work like they're supposed to, just that Sony wants to 
be careful, cover their bases, select games, we'll see benefits. And that really is the case because games need to have an unlocked frame rate, a dynamic resolution, or even things like loading. Even though PS5 has that super fast SSD, some games have hard coded sections that will load the same amount of time every single time. No amount of intervention will speed it up any faster. And so I think that's what their wording is really doing here. Although what we are seeing is a lot of Sony first party games receive patches out of nowhere, older games too. So things like God of War 3, 2018 God of War, uh, Astro Bot Rescue Mission, a lot of older Sony first party games got uh, recent patches for bug fixes and they haven't had any support in a long time. So we're thinking what this probably is, is native PS5 support. So the games uh, will unlock the frame rate or again, go for a dynamic resolution that will scale up to PlayStation 5, whatever small minor level of support is there or maybe just to make sure that compatibility is rich and reliable and the game doesn't crash maybe there were general maybe there were actual genuine bug problems with some of these games but we are seeing patches go out and this will probably be more commonplace for a lot of your ps4 library for games that maybe aren't super old but within the last you know year and a half two years or so major third parties could probably uh, get into the habit of doing this for series x series s ps5 you know probably something that we can expect uh, moving forward. Now some other key details that we learned, nothing too surprising here but still good to know. Transferring content from PS4 to PS5, you've got a lot of options, so between save files and actual full game installs, you can do it over a local Wi-Fi connection, so if you've got two boxes on the same Wi-Fi network, you can just lump some, move over your content. I'd imagine they'll also allow the Ethernet uh, cable as well, so if you don't know, you can put an ethernet cable plugged into one playstation to another and content will just transfer over that way uh, without any sort of internet connection you can do that uh, we knew about uh, external hard drives those are basically plug and play so if it's formatted and already working on a ps4 i'd imagine it'll work just fine on ps5 uh, playstation plus cloud saves for uh, just save files and Keep in mind, this would be PS4 save files for playing PS4 games on PS5 because the additional clarification we got and the thing that we were quite iffy on for a little bit there was uh, when it comes to game upgrades, PS4 games going to PS5 or even just cross-gen titles, it doesn't even have to be a free upgrade, just if it's a game that's from PS4 to PS5, can you move over to the, the next gen version and some games are doing this some games aren't well sony clarified this is in fact a developer decision so it's not mandated and there are tools there they're very accessible from what we're hearing uh, developers can absolutely make this work to let you transfer a save file from a ps4 title id to a now ps5 title id it's the same game but it'll be a different I title id that's the the slight issue here apparently it's easy to fix but it's just something that developers would have to offer, and apparently it's some that uh, some developers aren't actually doing, which is rather unfortunate. What's also pretty unfortunate is the PS5 HD camera, so Sony did finally straight up confirm this, and you know, if you've been watching LTPS, you know we've had suspicions here, but yeah, this is not going to work for the current PlayStation 4 PSVR, so if you want to keep playing PSVR on PS5, you will absolutely have to go through Sony to get that free little uh, adapter to use the PS4 camera on PS5, which as of right now, we still don't know how you get that adapter. I'm sure they're going to announce the, the plans for this at some point, but for right now, uh, just keep in mind, you need your PS4 camera. You can't use the updated HD camera. I mean, it was pretty obvious. That's why we suspected that when you look at the product page, it mentions nothing but the streaming capabilities and the streaming features. There's zero mention about this having improved latency and redundancy and you know tracking features for the current PSVR headset. And if it had it, it would have been very prominently on there, right? Sony will do anything to sell some PlayStation VR. Uh, so that's disappointing, although I expected that. Now, when it comes to remote play in PlayStation Now, this will be supported on PS5, if that wasn't obvious. And for PS Now, we saw it in the UI reveal yesterday. It was installed on the main home screen there, so it's likely going to be ready day one. So if you're a PS Now subscriber, you will be able to take advantage uh, immediately on PS5. But for remote play, Sony did clarify that you can, in fact, remote play PS4 games to PS5. So that is something that you can look into, uh, possibly as a way to save storage space. Keep in mind, there's not a whole lot going around with that SSD. About probably 620 gigabytes will be available, and that's decent. You'll be able to install a handful of games, just that expandable storage will be quite expensive, and so unless you have an external HDD that you can play off of and you don't care about using Game Boost on uh, some of those older PS4 games, 
or potentially streaming because obviously you'll be uh, capped at 1080p and it will be well you're going to be streaming it via remote play so it might not be uh depending on your home network or your connection that might not work all that well but again it's just it's an option it's there you can do it if you want Next up, if you remember last week, we were talking about the PlayStation Store on web and mobile getting a makeover, and due to that makeover, they were gonna be removing the ability to purchase PS3, Vita, PSP content, themes, avatars, things like that. Uh, obviously, behind the scenes, Sony's doing a lot of reworking and relaunching for some of their services, and one thing they also announced is one login ID across all their services. So, if you don't know, if you're not an active Sony customer, and I imagine most people don't really have an issue here, but across many of uh, Sony services, you would need different login credentials. And so for Sony Rewards, Sony Music, uh, PlayStation Network, basically all that's gone, one ID moving forward. And so you have to log into some of these services and set it up to where uh, it'll be one login credential moving forward. But this is Sony unifying all their services. And quite frankly, most businesses should be doing this because it is a huge pain when you know that one company and all their subsidiaries have all these different uh, segregated websites and services and it's a huge pain so I'm glad that Sony's doing this. And as part of the new mobile app that'll be rolled out within the next two weeks, Sony's closing the Messages app. So right now we've got an app dedicated just to Messages versus another app that's dedicated to general functions around your PlayStation 4 and uh, there was another app for communities that one already closed. Well now the Messages app will be closing towards the end of October and it even mentions PS messages will be integrated into the new PlayStation app and that's great. Before it was part of the uh, original app and then it was uh, split off into two separate apps with communities and messages so you had three total if you want to use all the features uh, for PlayStation 4. That was a huge pain. I don't like when companies do that either. So uh, hopefully the new app will be leagues and miles better than the current apps that we have because quite frankly they're not even that great to begin with. They're very slow and unoptimized, so I really hope that it's quick and snappy uh, when it does relaunch. Now, moving on to our next news story. Yesterday in the UI presentation, one thing that we took notice of is the fact that every application you hovered over took full priority over the screen, as in we never saw a vanilla-looking PS5 home screen like, say, PS3 and PS4, where you get XMB waves or the blue blades uh, flying around behind PS4. You get some sort of visualization. And where is that on PS5? Can you do custom themes? Well, this is where I'd like to call back a few weeks ago to the UI leaks that we had that we know at this point are genuine. There were some blurry pictures in there that show the UI in uh, what looks more like the startup uh, presentation where it's that amber finish. And now it looks uh, probably more similar to PS4 where there's some sort of blades in uh, the background there that are probably dynamic and swooshing around. And who knows if that's an early iteration, if that's still an option. Um, probably something that you can configure, I would hope or imagine. Maybe you can because one thing that we also saw is a new PlayStation Store listing for Dead by Daylight Stranger Things Edition, where in the description for the store listing, it actually says there will be a PlayStation 5 Stranger Things theme or a Dead by Daylight theme, something to that effect, meaning that potentially PS5 on day one will have themes. Not just that it'll have them, but it'll have them on day one. Now that's very prominent because quite frankly, I fully expect Series X, S, and PS5 to come out and lack features that the previous generation had. It's just very commonplace. Uh, usually you launch the system, um, deliver some of those very important features, and then over time you try to reach feature parity with uh, over-the-air updates. It just happens with so many devices, especially brand new uh, launches for tech products that are dramatically different from the outgoing one. And so I expected themes to not be a part of PS5 on day one. So maybe this is something where the UI is configurable on day one and you can actually apply um, custom themes that uh, you can buy from the PlayStation Store. Next up, if you recall last week, we were talking about how in the UK, certain PS5 game pre-orders were moving up a week early, so they would ship and release November 12th versus the PS5 console releasing November 19th in that territory. And while that was alarming to a lot of people, it's not super unusual because you can't do anything with it until you get the PS5. That's the more important street date. And so games will probably release a little bit early and maybe even accessories, and that's the new story here. Now in the UK, accessories are also being moved up to that new November 12th date. So you'll get games and accessories but no console and that will also be the case in the United States because as of right now at least from PlayStation's official f 
fulfillment site, so no other retailers have confirmed this yet. I'd imagine they'll start doing that by the time I upload this or something at some point. But basically, PS5 accessories will now start shipping October 30th, so that'll come uh, pretty, actually really early. So not too bad, right? Depending on what you pre-ordered, it would be fun to toy around with. I mean, you can't do much with it. Probably the most important one would be the uh, 3D Pulse wireless headset. So if you get that, you can use that right away on PS4. Uh, the camera, maybe you could plug that into a PC and mess around with that. Same with the DualSense, you know, you can't go crazy, but it'll be uh, nice to have uh, something PS5 related before the console shows up. For our next news story, Sackboy Big Adventure just got a new story trailer, and the more I see this game between this trailer and now the small snippets of footage we saw yesterday during the PS5 UI reveal, uh, I'm starting to really, really dig this game. And the thing is, I was already on board because I love Little Big Planet, I love Sackboy, I love platformers, I love 3D World, and that's pretty much what this is. And uh, it's just unfortunate that my gut reaction to initially seeing this game was, okay, I'll play this, but I don't know if other people will, because quite frankly, I could see this game easily flopping and I still to a degree feel that but this game is something that inherently might do better as a day one launch day uh, game on PS5 and you know it could be considered more launch day fodder but it looks beautiful it, it really does and it, uh, the platforming elements and some of the snippets we saw in the story trailer I think it actually looks like a, a lot of fun now, what we also saw this week was more gameplay for Spider-Man Miles Morales. Game Informer had some coverage here, and so we saw a few gameplay clips, some screenshots. We saw uh, the boss fight for uh, Rhino. That's one of the first fights in the game, and that looked super cool. But what was really impressive was our first transition from an interior of a building to outside, and that was basically one second where Miles shoots through a vent crazy fast on ps4 that's like a 15 second load screen it doesn't sound like much but when you sit there and watch a video of it online you realize that it feels like an eternity so it was really cool to watch that transition uh, but more importantly we did also see the reveal of spider cat and you know here's the thing i mean we were already i i, well, I can only speak for myself i was already sold seeing stray at the uh, ps5 future of gaming event you know i saw that cat i thought okay you already got me. Take a blank check, write whatever amount you want on there, I will pay it. And now we've got this. So, I don't know what to do because uh, <laughs> I really want to play this game. Now I really want to play this game. More so than I already did. But uh, all jokes aside, on to our next news story. We do have a minor update to the uh, PlayStation 5 India fiasco where it doesn't have a price or a release date. Well, now it has a release date. So, PlayStation India did confirm November 19th. As you would think, it was expected but uh, now it's confirmed. We still don't have a price though, and still no pre-order information. So if you're in India, hold out. Obviously, November 19th is close. So, I mean, there's gotta be, I mean, they're really running out of time over there, but certainly you're gonna find out sooner rather than later. Also, you know I had to include this. I love my cases, box art, physical games. Well, we finally saw our first picture of a real life PlayStation 5 game case. Godfall was printed to disc, and Randy Pitchford sent out a tweet uh, pretty much showing off the case. Nothing crazy, of course, but, you know, I'm getting jazzed up just looking at this thing. And uh, it just starts to put in my head of like, okay, a whole new generation to collect for. Let's, let's get the wallet ready. Although I'm much more conservative nowadays and thrifty with uh, shopping online and buying games nowadays. Um, it's just, you know, always exciting. Anyway, with all that said, it's time to get to Lutz Talk Plus. The weekly Let's Talk PlayStation giveaway where one of you can win a $10 PSN code. I would like to congratulate this viewer right here. I'll be contacting you very soon via email or Twitter. If you would like to win a $10 PSN code, it's very easy. Follow the link down below. Support on this channel a number of ways can gain you an entry. And I'll announce the winner next week because I'm trying to pay for your games. Those are all the stories that I want to share with you all. On Monday, we had a video about PS4's launch lineup versus PS5, or at least what we know with the PS5 launch lineup, uh, comparing the two. And then Thursday, yesterday, we had the PS5 UI reveal, so a full recap impressions. That video is much more thorough than what we talked about here, so if you didn't see, go check it out. And uh, T-minus a few weeks left. Um, we still got a lot of uh, great PS5 coverage on the way, and once the accessories roll in, and obviously the console, the games, a lot of that stuff will kick off here on this channel. So stay tuned for that. But until then, that concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Padecki. Thank you all so much for talking with me. And I will see you all next Friday.